first musician that made me want to play guitar was actually Slash. I was super, super into Slash. Not so much now, but when I was when I was younger, yeah, Guns N' Roses were like my top band. She had a really nice, I think it was like a 70s Fender amp that I'd found in like Loop magazine at the time, which I wish I had now, but I literally swapped that for like a crap Marshall transistor amp thing that had distortion built in so I could play the Sweet Child of Mine lead lead part really badly on that. Yeah, Slash, Slash was my guy. Could never quite afford a Les Paul, so um, I'm still hoping one day, one day I'll get there. It's a dream. I'm a sucker for a top hat and he, he nailed that at the market in top hat wearing lead guitarists. I bought a pair of cowboy boots when I was about 15 also trying to emulate Slash. I never went as far as a top hat. My plan when I was 15 or 16 was to move to LA to join a kind of Guns N' Roses style band as well. It didn't occur to me that the 80s had already happened. I genuinely thought like that was still going on there. I'd go out there with my cowboy boots, people would be like, you're in. But yeah, he was just a man. Absolutely, absolutely ripped, man, November rain. My one-two punch of, of musical greatness was uh, ACDC and Guns N' Roses. So ACDC, I think, being slightly easier. And I also bought the guitar tab book to Back in Black, was my first ever kind of purchase. But yeah, that and then the... Uh... <laughs> Still can't play that one. I stick to Back in Black. <laughs> yeah, those two. I guess the kind of like, they, the kind of bluesy thing. The time that was like my jam. I learnt that like. <laughs> it was like the first scale that like, you kind of learn if you're like an aspiring rock guitarist. And so anything which featured that, I was like, that's, that's it, I'm all about that. Cause I don't want to learn anything. So like all Rage Against the Machine songs I was super into. Cause they're just all that. Yeah, that kind of, yeah, that blues rock kind of thing, which I kind of really went away from. Yeah, at the time I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I don't know what it conjured up in my 14 year old head. Badassery, all sorts of badassery, I think, yeah. One of the ones that like really changed, I think the way I saw guitar and play guitar, and listened to guitar when I first got into Dinosaur Junior was Freak Scene. That was the, the big song for me. It's like weird open chords. <laughs> It's like, like this like heavy metal, Neil Young kind of thing. It moved away from all that kind of blues rock stuff, which I've been into before. It didn't have this kind of like posturing about it in terms of like, I'm a tough guy. That really was a big, big turning point for me. Jay Mascus is playing is like, yeah, still blows my mind to this day. Don't know how he does it. The tomb is pretty good. It's so simple. It's really hard to get that one wrong, which I usually do. So, I mean, it's literally the easiest thing. It's just... We fuck up like at pretty much every show. That's that's when we're pretty sure we're not gonna fuck up, or at least I feel. That's the one, that's the one. Numero uno, right there. One of my favorite guitarists actually when I was younger, I was like super into the band The Cribs. I was like massively into them. This is actually the first kind of normal looking guitar I bought in a while. Like I was really into offset fenders, like um, Mustang looking uh, short scale guitars. And the first one I bought uh, it's called a Fender Bronco, yellow with a black scratch plate. And I bought that because Ryan Jarman, their guitarist, had what I thought was that. It was a different guitar, but in my young mind, it looked the same. So I bought that, wanting to emulate his guitar because I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. They're still a great band, and he's still a great guitarist. So Ryan Jarman, yeah, he's my guy. <laughs>